já teve em Belo Horizonte, ano passado, na nossa, nossa edição lá. Né? Esse ano nos dando a alegria de novamente voltar ao Brasil, com muitas novidades aí que eu estou sabendo. Mas não vou falar aqui, porque senão né, vou atrapalhar aqui a palestra dele. Sebastião, contigo então. Obrigado. Bom. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm gonna. Sorry, I don't speak Portuguese. And yeah, I still don't know. Like I was here last year, I still haven't learned. Um, but this time I'm also I'm here with Breslau. He's also from Brepio. And he's working from Brazil, and and we have some news uh, about it. So I'm gonna do the talk, try to make it short, describe a little bit what we are and a few news about it, and also uh, what we are going next, uh, especially with with a product that a little bit louder. There, okay, awesome. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm gonna try to make it short. Um, we're going to describe a little, bit, a little bit what is Repio and what we are doing. Uh, and then we're going to jump uh, into Q&A, and Breslau is going to help me uh, to tr translate faster and maybe do it both in Portuguese and, and English at the same time. So um, we are, I'm the CEO and founder of Repio. We are a Bitcoin wallet. Um, we started in Argentina. And we are the main uh, Bitcoin company in, in from Argentina, and we are also expanding through Latin America. Uh, a few months ago, we launched our service in Brazil. Uh, we are doing it quietly uh, because not everything is, is Polish, but the, if you want to sign up, and you can already use it to deposit through bank transfers and buy and sell uh, Bitcoin here in Brazil with us. Uh, we have more than, this is old, we actually have more than 150,000 uh, users in our platform, and we are soon launching in Colombia and Mexico. Uh, uh, soon, um, we have some of the best investors in the industry. Uh, we are one of the oldest companies from 2013, and we have Tim Draper, Boost VC, Fenbushi from China, uh, Pantera Capital, Founders Cloud as some of our investors. Uh, to date, we raised more than uh, $4 million, and we are about to do an ICO. So we're going to describe that uh, later, and you can ask me more questions about what does it mean and, and how that works. And, and I guess I, I heard a few questions about tokens, so we can talk a little bit more about that, about Ripio and also other tokens. Uh, we have been growing a lot. This is a graph of our daily volume. Um, like as any Bitcoin company, with this last rally, our volumes and registrations have been going through the roof. And I remember being here last year, and the, um, the excitement wasn't that, that big. And it, I think it was half of this crowd. And, and we talk a lot about like, how important was Bitcoin and that we should stick here. Uh, and it paid out, like the ones that I saw, that I think, like, at that time, it might have done like 8x from last year to, to today. So it's, these are exciting times. Um, the, um, uh, so this is a little bit about what is our mission. And, and this is some of the reasons of why we choose to work in South America. Uh, the, our region is one of the poorest uh, regions in bank access and financial services. More than 60% of the population across uh, South America doesn't have access to formal or semi-formal financial services. Um, Brazil is one of the best ones, actually. It's, it's under 50% uh, of unbanked, but it's still like um, a huge percent of the population. Mi millions of people uh, don't have access to credit, to be able to pay online, and also we have very weak currencies. We know what inflation is, like everybody here I think uh, has suffered it. And crypto makes a lot of sense in our region. Um, so the mission of the company is to democratize access to financial services using blockchain, blockchain technology. And one of our main products um, is the, our review of credit. And this is something that we are one of the 
and first companies to start working on credit products using the blockchain. So the basic idea is that by building the wallet and giving more access, we are making that first layer of access for people uh, to, to start getting access to financial services. On top of this, we will continue building more advanced and more value add services. Um, and the first one that we're working on is credit. So we start last year. Uh, I actually announced it here, part, part of that. And in our initial phase was doing credits privately. So it was com funds from the company. You will go into the wallet, request uh, a loan, and it will be granted or not, but it will be paid by us. By us. But always was our idea to put this on the blockchain and start uh, bringing uh, a global credit network that can connect lenders and borrowers using peer-to-peer -peer technology uh, globally. And, and also makes a lot of sense. Like I think like through, through the um, through the talk we have been, uh, you have heard about the smart contracts many times. I guess like during the, even today, or if you follow um, crypto, you, you must have heard about this word, smart contracts. And if you think it, like credit is one of the most basic contracts that exist. Like it says, I'm gonna give you money, and in some time frame, you're gonna pay it back. Um, and that's a very simple contract that can be very easily cold. Uh, so with that idea, I'm thinking how the future may look like, we started building the, the Ripio credit network. And this will bring not only transparency and connected people globally, it will also solve many of the issues of peer-to-peer -peer lending. One of, the, one of the issues of peer-to-peer -peer lending is that if you go into a, a platform, the lender has asymmetrical access to information. Um, you, if you have extra capital that you want to lend to other people, you are not likely to know how to score the other person, how to know if they're um, going to pay back or not. And platforms are usually incentivized into make you lend because they make money by taking fees. And also if the, the, the borrower defaults in these peer-to-peer marketplaces, uh, the lender has very little recourse. Like they don't have the tools to, to be able to go and collect from that user. And if you make it global, then it's even worse. Let's imagine that we are doing this crypto uh, network for peer-to-peer -peer loans that, um, and you have like a Chinese lender, a Chinese investor that wants to lend to a Brazilian here in Brazil. Uh, he pays in, uh, in crypto, then the Brazilian gets uh, the funds here, and a month later he has to pay back. And if it defaults, the lender has very little recourse, no knowledge on how to do it, and also it will be extremely expensive to go cross borders. So this is our, some one of the challenges that have lending on, on crypto. Uh, we have a, a huge opportunity here on uh, lowering the cost, making, super, making it super transparent, but we also have to take care about all these issues about lending using the blockchain. So we think like we have came out with a, a solution for all these problems and to build a network that can work and, and really um, become something that will change the lives of millions. Um, so if, if you think of how this could work, you will have like a borrower, uh, someone that is asking a loan through a wallet. Most of the users that interact with crypto do it through wallets. So the, um, the wallet, what it's going to do is going to create a smart contract and publish it into the network. The smart contract will have the conditions about how much money they, they, they want to ask, what interest rates they're willing to pay, and then the network is going to add some information into that contract, like a stamps into the contract. So that makes that secure. One of the things is uh, have a, an identity verification. This doesn't have to be exactly the identity, but the stamp of an authority and uh, someone that can say, I know who is that user. And in case of a default, I can provide that identity. And so then, 
we we need a scoring so people so the the lender can have a, a credit warnings into the blockchain so this could be agents that are performing previously scoring and can look at the previous data and put this number into the the smart contract uh, to prove that conditions and then there are other agents but the most important one that we are think is going to change this is the cosigner by adding a cosigner into the smart contracts this can be entities in the local jurisdiction that charge a fee to cosign together the smart contract with the with the borrower so there is a, a cryptographic signature from the borrower and there is also a cryptographic signature from a cosigner a cosigner can be a local entity that has collection capabilities, like it's a company that has been doing lending or that they can uh, have uh, lo local attorneys. And if the borrower defaults, then they are going to cover that loan for the borrower and the, the lender will be pay out. And now the, l uh, the loan is from the cosigner and the cosigner will go and refinance with the borrower, will contact it, it could also go uh, and use the local jurisdiction um, uh, legislation um, and to be able to uh, collect from that. Um, so making all this together, we think that we can bring um, credit scores to people that can start building a credit history in the blockchain and also um, start uh, building a lock, uh, global liquidity pool for lending. There is a lot of money and li liquid money across the world, but in different regions. And this will bring down the not only the cost to get, uh, uh, get credit, also will make a lot more fluid the, the access to capital. So um, for building this network, we're creating a token that will be the access to the network. So uh, each, of each one of these agents will get charged in the token. And this is a new way to architect a business. And this is something that we can go very deep in the Q&A so that you can ask me more about how that works. Uh, this is all already kind of done. Uh, so we raised more than $30 million in a pre-sale from private investors. And we're also going to sell the, uh, the remaining tokens into a, in a crowd sale next Tuesday. But the white list is already filled, and so this is kind of like completely done. So it, we just need to launch the network by, by now. Um, but then the network will start using this token, and the us users of the network, something that has very, something very interesting is that as being a user of the network, you also are part of owner of that network. And if there is more and more usage, kind of like Bitcoin, it will buy, grow in value. So you, as a user, you're also in, you're incentivized to use the network and to um, create more awareness and more usage because you also have a piece of that ownership into the network. And this is something that we are taking from Bitcoin. And everyone that is a Bitcoiner and is a believer and has some Bitcoins, they talk about it with the with their friends and they, because they, you have a piece of ownership. You know that there is certain number of Bitcoins and if there is more users, then it's gonna be more valuable. So everyone that bought Bitcoin, they, they are incentivized to, to for the success of the network. And this is a new way to build an architecture for businesses. Every business that is a network can have a token that can share the ownership. So um, I want to thank you uh, with, with this and want, want to jump into the Q&A so that it's going to be a lot more interesting. Bom, acho que para a gente ser mais rápido, eu vou até quem está fazendo a pergunta, ouça a pergunta, rep, 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 repito para todo mundo e para o Sebastião em inglês, tá bom? Excuse me, uh, my English is not very bad. Uh, okay. uh, qual o índice de inadimplência nesse smart contract? What is the uh, default rate that you expect in this kind of lending? So um, that's kind of irrelevant. 
into uh, exactly how much there are the interest rates. It will, what you will have to um, take in consideration is like the cosigner is the one that has to predict that. And the cosigner, if he's charging a fee that is enough uh, to have a profit and to cover all the defaults minus the collection that he, he will be able to get back, as long as he's profitable, then the network will work. Então, a ideia é que, para esse tipo de modelo, para a, a rede, o, a, a, o risco de default é, não é relevante. Ele é relevante para o cosigner, porque ele está dando a garantia. Então, contanto que ele tenha lucro, uh, mesmo levando em consideração o custo que ele tem de ir atrás das pessoas que não pagaram e, e amargar aquela, aquelas dívidas que não foram pagas, então a rede funciona. So, uh, to add a little bit more to the uh, question, um, there, is, there is also a, a level of transparency that doesn't exist on credit networks right now, which is you can see in the blockchain how many loans have been uh, co-signed by the co-signer and how much funds have that fund because it's actually uh, another smart contract. And you can look how many funds uh, through a proof of crypt, uh, Cryptography, you can see how much funds have, have that, um, that cosigner. And then as a, as a lender, you can look how exposed is the cosigner and how much leverage he has. Like he has this amount of uh, capital and has uh, cosigned this amount of, of loans, then his exposure is this. And you can look very easily how healthy it is. É, só uma pergunta, vocês estão recebendo a tradução pelo fone, né? Então, não preciso responder a resposta dele. Próxima pergunta aqui. É, boa tarde. O Brasil tem uma das maiores taxas de juros uh, para empréstimos, uh, e principalmente o cartão de crédito no Brasil é um dos que tem as taxas mais caras. Qual a taxa de juros utilizada nos empréstimos uh, da Ripple? Porque isso me parece uma solução interessante para quem quer trocar uma dívida cara para uma dívida barata. So wh what is going to be the interest rate in the Repo network, uh, taking into account that we have very high interest rates here in Brazil, and people could change a high interest rate uh, debt for a lower one with Repo network. So uh, that's one of the big opportunities. Like there is a, like in this in our countries in across emerging markets, interest rates are uh, are very high, and so and this is going to be a market. I cannot predict what the interest rates are going to be. But and as a market, uh, borrowers will say, I'm willing to pay this amount of interest. And lenders across over the world, they can come into the network and lend, uh, and they will, and then there will be market. Like if there is a match between a lender that is willing to lend at a low interest rate, and then it will, there will be low interest rates. Uh, but that will depend on how liquidity builds and how the, the, the market gets more access. I think this is, uh, is, is the right, right time because the, now there is a lot of crypto profits. Like you have a lot of investors that got early into crypto and now there is a huge amount of value that, that, that is sitting and this will bring a way to have interest rates on crypto. É, é colocado um, uma disponibilidade de crédito em um país que não tem acesso ao crédito, justamente pelas pessoas não terem histórico de serem bons, de serem bons pagadores. E isso faz com que se crie uma situação em que tenha um fundo colateral para garantir a, a operação caso a pessoa não pague. E isso vai aumentar o custo. Como vocês vão conseguir ser competitivos a ponto de, na hora que baixar a taxa de juros, não aconteceu o que o rapaz ali simplesmente uh, comentou, que é eu abater uma dívida com uma outra dívida um pouco, me custa um pouco menos. Um, you're offering credit for people that don't have uh, credit history, uh, they're not good payers. 
And at the same time, you're adding a, a secondary cost for collateral in case of user default. They don't pay, there's another cost for your guaranteed fund. And how do you guarantee that this transaction uh, will have an interest rate that is lower, but at the same time, it won't create like a second fin refinance of a debt? Um, so there is no collateral from the borrower. It's just from the, the cosigner that can um, pay in case that, that is kind of like the insurance. So there is no, no collateral for the borrower. The, we are connecting two things that, that will bring uh, data that doesn't exist. Um, while the borrower doesn't have uh, a credit history, we do have a lot of information and wallets do have a lot of information about that user. And they have that information from the mobile app that the user has installed on their phone and you have access to their, so who they are and the KYC information. You have access to their transaction history because as they use the wallet, you know what they're paying, you know how often they do it, how often they load the wallet. And you also know, their, uh, you can also ask for their contacts, you can also ask for the social information. So you can build a credit score while they don't have a credit history. And then uh, from that access, they will start having a one. So that, w that w what we are going to do as a one of the wallets using the network is to leverage on the data that we have to be able to give that first score, which may not be uh, the perfect one because a good credit score is actual credit history. Uh, if you get loans, you pay them back, you're good. Um, but we can do good proxies to that. Okay, here, if you are over here. Vou falar em português, assim não tem jeito. Bom, é, bom, eu queria falar duas coisas. A primeira, acho que uma das razões da taxa de juros estar tão alta no Brasil não é, não é exclusivamente o, o, o registro de maus pagadores, mas também tem cartel dos bancos, tem um monte de questões bem mais complicadas. A, agora, a segunda coisa é o seguinte, eu queria saber o, no que, que vai diferenciar essa sua proposta de de crédito, de outras que já, já houveram, né? até uma, uma empresa que era brasileira, apesar de ter sede no, no estrangeiro, que um, oferecia créditos, mas não, não muito além disso, e, e um, a, as avaliações do, do, dos prestadores eram só uh, feitos por terceiros. né? Eu queria saber, então, se você vê como essa coisa do... do, do você tem um nível a mais, né? que é o... como chama? É o cosigner, e, e, e essas medidas do, da qualidade do cosigner, vocês vão dar ou, ou, ou um, o emprestador vai ter que correr atrás? Ok, então, a pergunta é... Just a, first, a comment that, of course, uh, the cost in, of lending in Brazil is not only high because of bad payers, but also because of the uh, competition situation among banks in Brazil. Mm -hmm. And uh, the second question is that Other peer-to-peer -peer lending uh, companies like BTC Gem in the U.S. Uh, they uh, they had their problems, and um, besides the co the cosigner, how is Hidio Credit Network going to be different than that? So um, yeah, I I, I I I hear that the it's not only the that there is. Um, Uh, low credit history. Uh, it is also that the, there is not too much competition in this market. So it, like Brazil has four banks that is are the entire, and, and maybe we can discuss how if they are actually four. Um, but the and there has been previous attempts into doing lending in crypto, and we have learned a lot about that. Um, I think there are. Uh, three things why this is different. One is timing. Uh, I think like there is now a lot more capital. Like w when BTC Sham started, uh, Bitcoin was less than a billion dollars, and now we are in the in the crypto is in a hundred billion. Uh, so the the value of the network is a hundred times more valuable. And also, um, there are two two other things. One is um, in BTC Sham, the loans were in Bitcoin itself. 
in a time that was very volatile. The loans in this network are going to be in fiat currencies. There is an agent called uh, Oracle that is going to give pricing information. So while the network will, will run on crypto, the loans itself are going to be denominated, denominated in fiat because people make their livings in fiat. And if uh, Bitcoin goes like a uh, hundred times or ten times, then you're incentivized to default. You're not only not going to be able to do it, you're also incentivized to default. And that was one of the issues of BTC Champ and why they, they had a very, like the, the kind of users they have were mostly uh, speculators or a few miners, but in the most of them were speculators. And the other thing that I had in this, this one and many others that attempted to do peer-to-peer -peer lending is that they had, they had very high um, fraud, uh, fraud rates. And, and that is connected with, one, there was no way to collect. Like the, the lenders did not have a way to collect and there was no one enforcing collection. That that's why we are adding this cosigner. Uh, because if you don't have enforcing in a network, the default rates of the network are going to be high. And that means that the interest rates are going to be high. And then to good people, it's not there is no economic sense to someone that has uh, a good trade wo uh, trade behavior to go and take this this loan, and that ruins the entire network. Um, and we actually took this idea from something that actually currently exists um, in Argentina and Spain and, and many countries ex exist a type of lending which is actually for companies. Uh, which are called uh, Sociedad de Garantía Recíproca, uh, um, STR. Um, there, 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 is, there is something like this in every emerging market. And in these entities, what they do is like you, one way for a company to finance itself is to m make a check and put a date in the future. So that check cannot be deposited until like a month, two months in the future. But if you're a random small business, no one will take that check or it will do it at a, at a huge interest rate. And there is these companies that are usually for sec sectors or for supply chain uh, or for a large company that is paying for, that knows their providers, that what they do will do is they're gonna stamp that check or rubber stamp actually. Like in Argentina, it's actually it's rubber stamp. You the, comp the SCR stamp the checks and sign it. And if then it acts as a cosigner. If the s small business default, the SCR pays for the, for the small business. And that has a huge liquidity. And if you are uh, um, an investor that is buying one of these checks, you don't care about the company. The only thing that you look is the SCR. You look how good is the SCR. And that brings a lot of liquidity and it makes it feasible to sell these checks in a stock exchange. And if you look back into the, in the diagram that we have is there are credit exchanges. And the credit exchanges, what they're, the, the lender in a credit exchange, what it's going to do is gonna put an order, kind of like a buying order for Bitcoin. They will say, I'm, I want to lend this amount of money. I want at least this interest rate. And I'm good if the cosigner is this one or any of these ones. Um, and then you don't care about, the, the lender really doesn't care who is the borrower. And that can create market and matching um, in a more liquid way. So that these are a few of the things that I think why is uh, it's gonna be better than the previous attempts. Olá. Olá. Bom, é tanta pergunta, né? Eu sou bancário e a gente só estuda o mercado financeiro, mas vamos lá. Primeiro, assim, acho que algumas perguntas que eu estou escutando aqui é, a, mostram um pouco do nosso vício em relação à visão do que é o um mercado financeiro, do que é a economia, na verdade. Nós temos que parar, de, parar de, na hora de pensar em economia, pensar em Banco Central, taxa de juros. A, a, a anomalia é o Banco Central definir a taxa de juros, ok? Quem define a taxa de juros não, não é um lugar centralizado, o que 
a RIP está propondo é que o próprio mercado, o mercado se autorregule. Então, o próprio mercado vai definir qual é a taxa de juros. Ok? Então, assim, perguntas como é, taxa de juros, qual, qual é a taxa de juros que a RIP vai colocar? A RIP não coloca nada. Quem vai definir é o, cons, é o consigner. Quem vai definir vai ser quem vai é, emprestar o, o, quem vai emprestar o recurso né, e do volume que ele tem emprestado, do quanto patrimônio que ele tem emprestado. Isso aí eu entendi. Agora, uh, agora eu queria entender o seguinte. É, o co o cosign, ele também vai receber uma parte dessa, de, dessa, uh, de, de, desses juros, ele vai cobrar uma taxa para garantir. E como é que vai ser feito esse pagamento né, para ele? Né? É, enfim, uh, é, a, a RIPO está preparada para ajudar quem for emprestar a, a escolher o melhor cosign, ou aquele que vai, vai dar a melhor taxa, eu não sei, eu não sei se eu fui claro na pergunta. Okay, so so first about a uh, comment about the anomaly that central banks define interest rates while the market should be defining the interest rate, and what the HIPPO credit network does is create a market that defines the interest rate. The, there are two questions. The first one is uh, how does the if the cosigner gets some money out of his activity and how does it work? And if HIPPO credit network will help lenders to choose cosigners. So, um, yeah, so central banks define interest rates to borrow money from them. So, because central banks make money. So, banks take money from the central bank. And the central banks define interest rates for you to take money from them. That's most of the banks, from other banks to, to other defining things. Um, but so, that's how this, that system works. Uh, this one is completely completely out of that, that system, but wallets locally will have to um, comply with local legislation. So maybe a borrower may not be in a jurisdiction who could more uh, in be willing to pay more interest rates uh, that some limit, and that may happen in, a, in one jurisdiction uh, compared to another one. And, and it's going to be the wallets that are going to have to comply with that. Um, co the in how cosigners works, there's going to charge fees, and that are going to be variable depending on the amount and uh, what is the score from the user, and their own internal uh, checks to s to to see depending on who is borrowing how much they're going to charge. Um, so um, uh, we are going to build the first cosigner um, for Argentina, which is where we are operating our credit product but will help more traditional companies to join the network and be able to lend uh, to, to the network and to co-sign together. I hope that answers the question. Uh, and, and how will HIPIO help lenders to choose co-signers? So the, the, um, we're going to make the first reference credit exchange. So uh, in that credit exchange, you're going to see on every loan who is the cosigner and information about that, uh, that, that cosigner. And the information is going to come from the blockchain, so it's going to be easy to do. Uh, but we, we want to other more exchanges to join to, to the network, and we'll be doing business developments to, to bring more exchanges around the world to join the network. Gente, mais duas perguntas só do pessoal que já estava aqui na fula. Na, na fula. Na fila. É, o what blockchain é, do you are using? Is the Ethereum? Yes, we are. Um, so I got the, the question. So we are using the Ethereum blockchain to begin with um, because it has a lot of um, uh, value and is um, very secure. Um, but we are considering to. Uh, push this in, into a single use case blockchain, especially because um, um, the cost of the Ethereum network is too high for, mi for mi micro loans. So at the beginning, we are going to have to start with, um, n not with micro loans, but a, a little bit larger, to be able to pay all the fees of the creation of the smart contract and all the gas to that execution. But as the network becomes more valuable, then it becomes easier uh, to switch into your own network once you have enough enough um, 
market cap to, to be secure. Uh, uh, and uh, any platforms can see when a guy don't pay? Uh, yes. So every loan is going to be registered in the, in the blockchain, so you can have a complete history of uh, anyone that has used the network. Eu queria que esclarecesse um pouco mais o, esse co-signer. Que tipo de, de, de figura é essa? São pessoas, são companhias de seguro, são, são é, órgãos governamentais. O que, que é esse co-signer? É um ponto. E o segundo é, ele acabou de falar agora que, devido à rede que ele vai usar, que vai ter um valor mínimo de empréstimo, que ele não vai poder fazer empréstimos muito pequenos. Foi isso que eu entendi. É, qual seria esse valor mínimo hoje, falando numa cripto ou, ou numa moeda qualquer? So the first question is, uh, what are the cosigners? Are they people? Are they companies? Are they insurers? Are they authorities? So a little bit more detail on that. And the second uh, question was, if you have an idea of how small the minimum uh, type of credit would be so um, this the cosigner is actually in a smart contract so behind that smart contract there could be a person it could be a company there could be a, a government agency uh, so it's, there is no limitation on who could who that be but you will have a history for that cosigner and you will you will see um, how is their uh, behavior. But it's most likely that the, the companies that fit best to be a cosigner are current companies that are actually currently doing collection. Uh, for, for an individual to become a cosigner, it will be very difficult uh, to later go uh, and, do, and do this work. Um, and I don't see government agencies joining as, as cosigner. Um, but maybe some some government wants to incentivize in lending in their region and they want to uh, subsidize it, maybe they, they will join in the future. But I, I don't see that. Um, uh, I think it's most likely insurance companies or more more like collection companies that already are working as, as collectors. And there are companies like this everywhere. Uh, usually a credit card company, when they when someone defaults, they sell that default and some company will buy it and do the collection. We think like that are more natural um, cosigners. Gente, é, eu sei que tem mais perguntas por aí, tá? mas vocês também estão querendo ouvir do, do Mad Dog que está vindo aí. A gente vai estar tá aqui ainda hoje, amanhã. Sinta-se à vontade para falar com a gente. Tá? E, naturalmente, é ripio.com. Vocês podem já, hoje, operar aqui no Brasil, comprar e vender bitcoins junto conosco. Obrigado. Uh, and for more information about the, the network, uh, it has its own website, and it's repiocredit.network, and you can have the, read the white paper and how it works. And there is also a newsletter where you can uh, get more updates about, uh, about the product and the, uh, and the evolution. And I wanted to ask you one more thing. Can you make me one favor? Ah, yes. Okay. I, I recently bought this camera, which is a 360 camera. And, and I want a photo with all of you. <laughs> so, yeah, come here, and, and I want a, a big to the moon. Uh, and around it, and then we can make it very viral on social. <laughs> We're all friends, amigos, <laughs> hermanos. Uh, más cerca, más cerca. Uh, a big to the moon. Hey. To the moon. Gracias. Gracias.